Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Donette Palmore, and we are talking how to run your business like a business, because as mompreneurs and solopreneurs, I think that's something that we often forget. So before we dive into this conversation, Donette, welcome to the podcast. Amy, thank you so much, and uh, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited for this conversation. So before we dive in, can you tell us more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I have been an entrepreneur for over 22 years. Um, I stayed at home with my children, helped my husband run our small business. Um, so I get it. And I homeschooled my children on top of it. So I threw in an extra little thing. <laughs> Why not? You like a challenge, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, but we had a good time. So. Uh, now I am a money coach and I empower professional and entrepreneur women to gain clarity, control, and confidence with their money so they can run a thriving business, live a financially stress-free life without sacrificing what's important to them. And that right there is huge without sacrificing what's important because as a solopreneur, it's easy to get encompassed in our work and just be working nonstop. Did you find that when you were, you know, raising, trying, you were homeschooling and raising your kids and running the business, trying to do all of the things, how did you navigate that? It was hard, but really what I've learned over the years is to do my business around my life, doing it around what's important to me. And so my family and my children always came first and I did the business around that. Did that mean some late nights? Absolutely. Um, working on the weekends, whatever it was. But, you know, I think it was Jim Rohn or Zig Ziglar that said, don't miss a thing. And I made sure I didn't miss a thing. I love it. And that is so important to keep in mind at the top of mind, because you think about it, our kids are technically under our roofs for only 18 years. I mean, at that point, they're considered an adult, which is kind of terrifying. You know, looking back at life, <laughs> myself when I was 18, you know, you think you have everything figured out. And in reality, you you don't at all and it's terrifying you have nothing figured out. <laughs> right exactly and the older you get i think you realize how much you didn't know and it's like oh gosh my parents were right <laughs> you know now that i am a mom some of the things that i've said i'm just like oh my gosh what? so <laughs> right exactly so one of the common pitfalls business owners make is forgetting that your business is a business and in order to thrive, in order to be successful, you actually have to run it like a business. So where yes. do you see with the, the women that you're coaching, with the business owners you're coaching, where do they start to make this mistake? Number one is they don't recognize they're a business owner. And so they, they're not separating their business and personal finances. Everything is running through one account which is dangerous for both our personal and our business, but it's also dangerous when the IRS gets involved. I totally know the stress, right? It is stressful to be transferring money. It is stressful to make sure you have money in both places and is this gonna clear and that's gonna clear. That is stress we don't need on top of all the other things that we do. And so that is the number one thing I see people do is commingle their finances. I heard a great analogy sometime last year and it was saying that you know that is as a business owner one of the most important things you can do is separate those finances out because it's basically like giving a stranger a key to one room in your house saying okay i want you to run in to my kitchen grab this out of this drawer they're only accessing that one thing versus here's the keys to my house dig away you know have at it and it, it's true because when you're mixing everything and if you get audited you're setting yourself up for a lot of stress, a lot of uh, investigation. Uh, essentially uh, put you out of business. Uh, I had a client who was commingling her finances, got audited, ended up owing like 
ten thousand oh, dollars and guess what they audited her the very next year so not only do we have to go through that stress but we have to pay a cpa a tax professional because we cannot go through an audit with the irs it's a nightmare yeah so if you're listening to this, do not commingle your finances. And the nice thing too is there are so many banks that will offer small business owners very low fee accounts. I feel like, especially with the change in economy over the recent years, that a lot of these banks are small business friendly. So don't assume that, okay, that's really expensive or, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to have to pay taxes. Well, no, let's shift that mindset to I get to pay taxes because that means I am making revenue. And then you can do legitimate write-offs and deductions and everything's in one place so that you can keep track of it. So what other tips can you give us to run our business like a business? Okay, so besides not commingling anymore, um, it's to know what's coming in and going out. And the way that you do that is you're gonna get on a spending plan. I don't use the word budget because budget is not fun. Budget's very restrictive. It's been used to abuse and manipulate and all those things. And I know everybody's cringing as, as they're hearing this word. So I use spending plan because it's we're actually making a plan with our money. And you need to do this in your business as well as in your personal life. And part of um, your plan is paying yourself. That's another thing I don't see small business owners, entrepreneurs doing is paying themselves. You have to be paying yourselves. Otherwise, what are you doing this for? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think that creates a lot of resentment, you know, and frustration for business owners because you're putting in all these hours, but you're not taking anything from it. And you, right. you need to. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. We have to make money. Ladies, we have to put food on the table. We went into business to give our children a better life so that we could be with our children. You know, all these reasons why we went into business, we have to remember them. And I, I've heard, and I think myself have been this, had this mindset that as women, we feel like we shouldn't be asking people for money. Yeah. But you know what? Nobody else has a problem asking us for money. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. No. And that is a very common mindset lock. How, what advice can you give us for overcoming that guilt of asking for money? I would say, you know, with any block that we have, we really have to think about where is this block being rooted from? Where is it coming from? Why am I believing this? And then consistently and actively changing it right? With our affirmations with, oh my gosh, this is coming up. Let me change. And this is the way I want it to be. So being aware of our thoughts, I mean, that's so important because, you know, our mind is like a self-sabotaging <laughs> son of a gun, right? It Always is. trying to sabotage us. So when we become aware of it, then we're able to change those, those thoughts, those, uh, that mindset and make it what we want it to be. And I love that. I love how you're, you know, bringing the mindset piece in too, because it's critical as a business owner that can make you or break you so quickly, especially if you are having these narratives that you're not worthy of money, that why should I be asking for money? You're not a charity. It's okay. You know, you have value to provide. It is okay to be compensated for that value. I mean, look at all the people we're compensating for their value day in and day out because they make our lives easier. And for most of us, we're providing that transformation to our clients. So it's okay. It's okay to accept that and welcome that. Absolutely. And not only is it okay to accept comp uh, compensation, but to be well compensated. Yes. Yeah. Do you find a lot of business owners undervalue their services and what they do? Yes, I, I would say that because they're scared. We, we get scared to, you know, I would even say in my own journey. I mean, I was char hardly charging anything when I first started. And the confidence it took to get to where I'm at today and to say it with confidence and to believe it with confidence you know, it's a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. We get that right. Again, it's a mindset and it's really just changing that and realizing the value that we bring to people. And like you said, that transformation, 
when you can transform someone's life, it is, it's priceless because they get to take that transformation for the rest of their life. It's not just that moment, that service, that product, but it's their whole life that gets to change. Oh my gosh, that's so powerful. And do you find that a lot of times when we do start charging our worth, we're calling in these higher level clients. We're getting those clients that are going to show up, that are going to put in the work, that are going to um, be, that are ready to invest in themselves and their growth because they know the value of what they're investing in. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, think about if you paid $20 for something versus $2,000 difference does that make to you? You you know, it's like, oh, it's 20 bucks. I could throw it in the trash or whatever, but it's like $2,000, put that up on the shelf. You don't want no one to get that. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, immediately like a purse from Walmart versus, you know, a coach bag or a Louis Vuitton, like that comes to mind. Yeah, you're going to have more ownership. You're going to care for it more and about it more. And yeah, I love that. That is such a beautiful analogy. What I think going going back to that, knowing who we want to serve, like who are we serving? Yeah. I had a client who was attracting these people that were constantly canceling. And she's like, I want to help them. And I go, I get it, but but it's not helping you, and you're really not helping them because they're they're canceling. So who is it that it never cancels? Like who is not canceling? And they're like, Oh, it's this person. I go, that's your person. That's who you have to go after. The other people, you know, sell them a lot lower product. And if they cancel, it's not a big deal. But knowing who we serve is going to help us to also be comfortable with the, what we charge. Because we're not going to, um, they're not going to pay a low price. And, and I think that's where some of the narrative in our mind starts with the, the pricing drama and the stories that we tell ourselves. Because, yeah, you know, if you are investing more money, you're going to take more ownership. And I love how you talk about the confidence piece, too. Being able to confidently state what your value is, what your offer is. How do we improve our ability to do that? Doing it. Practice doing it. Practice it in the mirror and look people in the eye when you give it to them. Um, something I've changed in my language is this isn't my price, but this is your investment. Yeah. Because it is an investment and it's not just something they're buying. Exactly. But they're actually investing in themselves. And I really, I, I see the value in that too, because it is, it's something that's going to provide them value, not only while they're in your container, not only while they're in your world, but into the future, because like you alluded to, you know, you're, you're teaching them skills. These are tangible skills that why are we undervaluing it? You know, you won't, society won't blink an eye at dropping, you know, $200,000 on a college degree. Yet, you know, you, you look at the, the price of, you know, just a one-on-one -on -one mentorship or a coaching container and it's like, oh gosh, you know, like, wait a minute. No, let, let's, let's dive in here. You're getting one-on-one -on -one attention. You're not in a class with 200 other people that you'll never actually speak with the professor. You know, we need to really share our value and convey this value to our clients. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's a great analogy, you know, is that people are willing to pay this high price for something that they may, most people don't even use ever. Yeah. And they're paying a high interest on it. And it looks like it's going to be, I mean, if you're owing $200,000 and you're not a doctor or an attorney, you're going to be paying that for a very long time. And that's depressing. You invested two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000 in yourself. The interest you get back is forever. Right, exactly. And you look at the ROI on it, you know, that, that return on investment of what you're spending versus the value you're getting it's incredible. I mean, you can't match it. So what are your thoughts on, you know, having a coach, having a mentor, having someone like yourself there to navigate through these challenges, especially as you're trying to grow and scale your business? I mean, 1000% you should have a coach or coaches. Um, I call them uh, getting wise counsel around you. Yeah. You know, we need tax professionals. Sometimes we need attorneys. We need these different people around us. And a coach is just part of that, that wise counsel. 
you know, getting, uh, having somebody who's not emotionally attached to your life or your situation that can help you with the insight that you already have, because we already know what to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of pulling it out, right? We already know. And sometimes we get scared or we, we're in this box or we're stuck in the middle of our situation and we don't see the whole picture. So coaches and mentors and things like that help us to see that and help us to see the bigger picture and, and takes the emotion out of stuff. Sometimes, you know, they give you a kick in the butt. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, that's we just mean. it. We do. We really do. And it's coming from a place of constructive criticism. You need Absolutely. that unbiased feedback to grow and to thrive. And I think that's where so many of us hold ourselves playing small and don't challenge ourselves because we're we're afraid to get that feedback. We're, nobody really likes hearing, okay, you need to be doing this better, you need to be doing that better. But when you have someone in that role, I love how you say this, that wise counsel. You know, they're not emotionally attached and that is gold right there. That will literally save you so much time, stress, anxiety, frustration. It will literally collapse time for you mistakes it'll save us some yes mistakes. oh my gosh absolutely because i mean looking back at, at my own business journey it's like wow i have learned a lot like can i please like tell you what i've learned so that you don't do that same thing but you know in business i want your thoughts on this too i've really had the mindset shift within the past year that there is no failure in business failure is just redirection failure is all in your mind but failure is just objective data saying, okay, well, that didn't work out like I thought. So let's pivot. Let's try something different. And that's where having that wise counsel is key. They can help you oh, identify yeah. those blind spots that we're not seeing. Exactly. And John Maxwell says we either win or we learn. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing. And when you take the emotion out of it, you will be successful. You will learn. You will grow. Absolutely. Life is life is just a long lesson. Lesson after lesson after lesson. And I think having a mentor or wise counsel around you are the people who possibly have gone through that. You're kind of investing in their their own um, learning experiences and and wisdom that they have so that you can make your own set of, you know, I don't want to say failures because they're not failures, but, but your own set of experience, learning experiences to pin to somebody else. Exactly. And that right there is incredible. I love it. I love it. It's priceless, I, right? It, it really is. It truly is. And that's the, the beauty of being in small business is just the willingness to, of so many other small business owners, you know, get in the room, network with others, connect with people, listen to podcasts. We are living in an age where you can literally learn anything you need tool and tactics wise to build a business online. But if you don't get that mindset, right, if you don't have a community surrounding you, it's going to be a heck of an uphill battle. Absolutely. It can be very, like I said, our brain is our own worst enemy. Yeah, it truly is. And with that being said, any other advice for us? Any other advice on how to run business like a business? If you had one big takeaway for us. One big takeaway. Um, I would say to get get on your spending plan because it's huge. The spending plan, I say the magic is in the plan because we get a dream there. We get to see what's possible. We get to see how we get to grow. And it could be overwhelming at first, right? Because you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to look at this. But until we become aware of something, we have zero power. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to look at it. Usually we're, we're afraid of something and then we do it and it's like, oh my gosh, it wasn't that bad. Most of the fear is just made up in our head and we just, they say, you know, courage isn't because we're not fearful. Courage is that we face the fear and we did it anyways. That's what courage is. That's what being brave is. It's just continuing the journey no matter how scary it is. But if you don't look at where your money's going, you're never going to know and you're going to stay on this hamster wheel, homing, glean, juggling, being frustrated. And one day you're just going to say, I can't do this anymore. And you know what? The world needs what you have 
And so it's not just a disservice to yourself and your family, but to the world. Um, because we need your gifts and we need your talents. It truly is because it's you doing things in the unique way that you do. That's where your value is. I love looking at, you know, authors and cars and, you know, look at how many are, are doing the same thing. You know, uh, there are so many self-help books out there on the exact same topic, but it's that unique person with their unique perspective that draws people to you. All cars in the world get you from point A to point B. Well, we have our lower end models, our luxury models. Yeah, they all serve their unique niche. They all have their unique way of doing things, way of, you know, making you feel a certain way. So yes, get out there because we need the value you have to share. Donette, yeah. this was such a perfect wake up call that I think our listeners definitely needed to hear. So refreshing to hear it. So please, ladies, take this information and utilize it. If you don't have things separate, start today. Don't put it off any longer. It's okay if you're not doing it. Don't freak out and just take action. Just do it. Go get an EIN. Go open your business bank account then. Take those steps to make a legitimate business and run your business like a business. That will save you so much time and stress and aggravation in the long run. Donette, how can we learn more about you? Well, you can find me on all social media platforms at Your Money On Purpose. Um, I also have a podcast called Your Money On Purpose, which is focused towards uh, women entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, yeah, and you Google Your Money On Purpose, I should come up. <laughs> that is amazing. And that is the beauty of it, being consistent across all those platforms. So there's another nugget. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you easy to find. All right. Thank you, Donette, so much for taking time out of your crazy schedule to connect with our listeners today. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.